why we all use Discord. So why haven't we built like a decentralized thing that is as good as Discord that we all suddenly, you know, switch to? Um, what, like, why can't we do that? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, um, I, th I think it's possible. A lot of the tech is still just so early, right? Yeah. So the traditional architecture to build a web application, right? You know, um, has existed since the 90s. You know, you, you run a central server. Your main problem is scaling that up. Um, you know, Discord, fantastic experience most of the time. Sometimes I can't read messages for 10 minutes, right? Because there's just like so, so much scale. Um, and the, um, uh, the trade-offs are totally flipped with decentralized tech, right? It's, you get scale for free. Right, you only need to connect to the people that you're actually talking to. Right, that's right. great. Um, but getting a global view, discovering new things, harder, and you need to build systems for that. The underlying technologies are—I wouldn't even necessarily say that they're harder; they're just newer. We we haven't had the millions of person hours put into it yet to make the to make it really smooth. Versus the lamp stack, which has been around since you know the, the mid '90s, yeah. um, and a lot of the tech that we're working on at Vision is literally to enable these things. So could we build a Discord-like experience with something like Matrix? Yeah, pr probably. Um, you know, we were using Matrix-like things uh, five, six years ago, and the experience was still really not there. Yeah. And it's a lot better now, right? So somebody has to come along and build, you know, a UI and an account system and all of these things around that. Um, that makes it easier. Um, but a lot of the underlying, you know, how do you do DMs in a decentralized way? Well, you need encryption. Which encryption? There's a lot of choices to be made. So a lot of the, the stack that we're building at Fission is to solve these kinds of questions, right? Like, should we be able to build a blue sky PDS that involves DMs that are end-to-end -end encrypted? There's What's a PDS? In the... uh, sorry, a uh, personal data store. Uh, so... Blue Sky, the um, decentralized, uh, often described as a decentralized Twitter, yeah. um, is uh, building a protocol as well as the product at the same time. And uh, when there's more than one provider, today there's just the one, right? But when there are multiple providers, uh, you'll need to store your data somewhere. So they call that a personal data store who's actually hosting your data. Right, right, right. So like Tim uh, Berners-Lee's sort of solid, this idea that like you have all your data, but you can move it from, from whoever you want. Yeah, Interesting. exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, one of the things, so solid's sort of interesting. Um, you know, do I think that your average consumer understands the concept of a solid pod and that, you know, oh, I'm going to buy storage here and, you know, it'll have all of my app data in it. Um, I think that'll get abstracted away by developers, but we can go even further decentralized and say, you know, Solid still says, this is where the data lives in this place. And then like you could pick that up and move it around. A lot of decentralized tech and just getting started with some of this stuff, right? You know, local first and, and, and whatnot, uh, which is another related, um, uh, you know, part of the zeitgeist um, says, well, what if there isn't a single site for data? What if your data, the data that you have on your laptop while you're on a plane with no Wi-Fi, why isn't that considered real use? Absolutely, it's real use, right? Why can't I replicate my data on iCloud and on in a solid pod, right? Mm -hmm. And have them know and interact with each other. And so, again, a lot of the stuff that we're working on, from UCAN through WinFS through IPVM, is this like, well, what if there weren't boundaries? between things and what if you could self-host without having to run a server what if your browser was self-hosting yeah i feel like one of the it's sort of one of the tests that one of the reasons why things centralized up is people went god i don't want to run my own server to use moxie marlin spikes liar i don't want to like deal with this low level stuff i just want that abstracted away and the question you know again having worked or seen people work in big organizations you're going you that is in no way abstract <laughs> like there's still going on somebody's still having to solve those problems um uh and you still get occasionally the disasters that come from like not having solved those problems effectively we 
need to solve those pro problems in an open way and slowly slowly abstract and like give you a toolkit so you've mentioned a few times that the latest thing that bit of this toolkit that you're working on is um is ipvm um so is that ip as in interplanetary like as in ipfs great um and I just want to throw in case we run out of time or whatever, you're going to be speaking on about this at um, Strange Loop in September 21st, I think. Um, so with the preface that, like, I imagine it's even deeper than we can cover here, let's go and listen to that. Um, what is IP, IP uh, VM? Yeah. Um, so IP VM, uh, IPFS is obviously for data, right? And content addressing gives you the ability to say, well, I don't care where the data lives, go find it for me. And everything's immutable, and it has cryptographic proofs, and you can trust that you're getting the right data. IPVM says, well, what if we took that and extended it also to compute? Right? Um, now, now we, just in the past few years, have a few new pieces that we can work with. Right. So one is WebAssembly, which is uh, you know, when you're building a, um, an app for the browser, um, you program it in JavaScript, and now, more recently, WebAssembly, which is like a lower level um, uh, instruction set. So you can basically compile down to a binary and, and ship that into the browser. And it compiles from uh, 40 plus languages today, and you know, they're onboarding new ones all the time. And it has this nice property where you can flip the right switches on it, and you get completely deterministic um, execution of the other mm -hmm. side. So in the same way that I get some data, I run a hash, and I check that the content address is the same, we can check, OK, were these two runs the same? And do I get the same result every time? Which is actually, historically, has been a really difficult problem. This isn't something you can do by you know, compiling just arbitrary code and shoving it in a Docker container. And you, know, you might get right. a different result every time, right? Um, it's very, you know, WebAssembly now runs in every browser, it runs on servers, it runs on desktop, it's just kind of everywhere, right? Um, and it's still early days, but uh, it's at least runs all over the place and the tooling's getting better all the time. So we said, well, okay, we have the same sort of determinism guarantees. What if we took, instead of conscious addressing, we had input addressing, and we built workflows out of them? So um, if I have a workflow that's like, you know, uh, grab this photo off of IPFS, um, grayscale it, crop it in this way, and uh, then write it into Filecoin, right? Like that's a pretty typical workflow. Um, I can get back receipts from each step of that. So everything in there is totally deterministic. If I run it again, I get the same results. If I crash halfway through, I don't have to start from the beginning. I can go to right. which step I was in and continue from there. And if somebody else wanted to, I can't remember the exact sequence I just described, but you know, grab that same image, right. uh, what was it, grayscale it, crop it, and then do something else with it, they don't have to run all of the compute again. They can just pick up from wherever the difference is right. um, and, and move on. Um, and in the same way that, so one way of looking at this is almost like smart contracts, right? Except without consensus. Most things you compute don't require consensus. Right. Only a consensus when you have uh, some kind of scarcity, right? You have money or you, know, you need to prove that somebody owns the NFT or something like that. Most other things don't need to wait for things to execute in absolute lockstep, right? The only people who care about me grayscaling the image are like, I don't know, me and my friends, right? So IPVM basically says, hey, you know, I'm on a low powered Android device. I could run this locally, but you know, I would like this to run faster. Who has some spare compute cycles? And another device will say, hey, I'm on the network too. I can do that for you because every device can run WebAssembly, um, and maybe they're going to do it altruistically because it's your, you know, your desktop at home, or maybe it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it for you know this bid price, and you know, off it goes. So it's a little bit like AWS Lambda, but decentralized. Hmm. Um, and so that, that was the initial idea for it. And there's you know some other benefits around um, you know uh, error handling and stuff, so you don't have to worry about it, but you know, that's getting more into the strange loop talk. Um, the, um, once you have that in place, you want to be able to also do things at the end, like send an email, send an HTTP, HTTP request, um, uh, 
write it into Filecoin, send something to a smart contract, right? And so we're building it in a way that we're calling the, the open world architecture, where uh, using UCAN underneath to tie all the services together, uh, you can do deterministic compu computation on any, de any device in the world, but if you need to run something, let's say with a GPU, well, we now know that this group of computers have GPUs, they're willing to take jobs for you, and you can send it off to them and get mm -hmm. results back. Um, so we're still at the point where we're working on the fully deterministic WASM only stuff, but where we're right. going with this is, you know, you should be able to start a, um, a flow directly from the browser without any extra hosting, no setting up a server, nothing like that. Have it, you know, run a few steps and then go, ah, actually I need to send something into a FVM uh, contract. Have it do some computation there, send you back a result. Oh, I need this to run... Um, a chat GPT, or I, I guess just a, a you know a GPT uh, job. Okay, well actually, that is a really great fit for Bacalyao. It can then go into Bacalyao and come back, right? And it doesn't have to go back, you know, into the same device all the time, you know, uh, for um, uh, always having to go out to a, a web server is a lot of time and latency, and so saying, well, you know, I, I actually need to compute over a terabyte of data that lives on this Filecoin node. I'm going right. to send the request to them, and they can do all the steps that they need to and send it back to me, because now it doesn't depend on any particular location for the compute yeah. to happen. I get proofs at the end, everything's deterministic, I can spot check them, you know, et cetera. Yeah. I feel like the story, the story of a lot of the stuff that folks are building out is that some of it is kind of exposing the guts of of what's been developed in centralized systems where you're going obviously they have like all of this often you know pretty distributed and decentralized because it's the only way to have it work kind of resource allocation systems internally to their systems and so you have to recreate that part of it um but then you get this bonus stuff for free right which you know lets you do more complicated things because you're back in the open world right you're back in like literally you can connect to anything and do anything in that broader kind of bazaar rather than having to wait for amazon to recreate that or think that that is something that is worth them doing huh so yeah. um so You, you, so you're wor working, so, uh, okay, so we've got like this stack appearing now of UCAN, IPVM, uh, uh, WinFS, and I mean, again, not just you, but like, you know, there's things like OCAPN going on, there's all mm -hmm. the standards around um, IPFS itself, lib P2P and so forth. So what's sort of interesting about this is that the, how, is there's not really a huge amount of connection yet between that and the external standards world, right? Like these aren't going through the IETF. They're not going through the W3C. Um, do you, or even, um, you know, uh, the more sort of ad hoc ones, like what, what WG. Um, is that a benefit right now that like you're being a little bit more sort of, you know, let's, let's explore the space. Do you anticipate those things becoming more traditional standards? Yeah. Um, so about a uh, year and a half ago, two years ago, um, I had this moment of, oh no, I need to put this in a regular standards <laughs> body because who's going to hold the IP, right? Um, oh, right. Yeah. Always yeah. kind of tricky. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, asked around and talked to a bunch of people who had done standards, you know, and, and uh, you know, worked on XML or like the, the standard, right? Or worked on, you know, OAuth or, you know, what, whatever the standard is. And overwhelming the answer back was like, how many people are using this today? Is it less than 100,000? You know, how many companies are using it? Less than 100,000? Cool, don't worry about it. Hmm. Make sure that the IP is, um, is clean, right? Right. Um, do all the IP releases have a... Um, uh, uh, essentially all of the uh, contributors sign saying like, yes, I released this into the public domain, you know, all, all of this stuff, right? Which is different from an open source license. Right? Sure. You know? 
And patterns um, too, right? You have to try and like navigate patterns too. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah absolutely. In fact, uh, part of the paperwork, we use something called the um, Open Standards License. Um, uh, no, Open Standards. Ah, I can't remember the, the last part of it. But make a um, make a immutable reference to it, and then we'll stick it in the notes. Yes, so, <laughs> that yeah. sounds okay. good. Um, and uh, when you're signing off, saying like, "Yep, I, I'm." I allow this. Um, it includes like, do you have any patents? Because we need to know about those, right? right. Um, so in order to keep things like really nimble and you know update things, and in fact, you know, you can currently is at uh, version zero point ten. We're moving towards a one point oh. Like, I, I mean, it's a sort of open secret. The zero point ten is sort of like the one point oh RC. We're just making sure that there's nothing like funky in the format or something like that. But that's quite a few versions. So we were doing, you know, a couple of versions a year for a while. And that's, um, uh, you know, at, at a relatively high rate of pace. What you get in the big standards orgs is lots of voices, which is great, but it does slow the process down, right? So like, we still need to move really, really quickly right now. We need to make sure that we're, you know, the standards are meeting people's needs, that we're not going to have somebody need to like fork the thing so that it meets their, their need. They can just show up on a community call and we can be like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Let's put it in the standard, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and sort of done. Um, so we, we've done all of the sort of hygiene around this so that five years from now, we could take it to the wherever, the IETF and say, hey, this is in wide use. We need to, to actually make this like really solid. Um, you know, can you, you know, help facilitate that process and can we get an RFC number for it? You know, all, all of these things. Right. Cool. So we are still uh, in the exciting bit where like, you know, anybody can join and there's a lot to be explored and fixed and, and learned in this space. Um, what's the best way if people want to find out more and participate uh, with, with, let's go, you can, uh, with an FS and uh, uh, IPFS. Uh, I'm sorry, IP, the end. Um, so a couple of ways. Uh, one is uh, join the Fission Discord. Always easy. Um, and uh, our website also has links out to all the, the various projects. Um, you can is the thing that's the furthest along. It has its own Discord, even. Um, so you can find that in, in the Discord directory um, or on youcan.xyz. Uh, it has a, a link to it as well. Um, all of these uh, things that we've broken out um, follow the pattern as GitHub orgs. So github.com slash ucan-wg or ipvm-wg or winfs.wg. Uh, they're all four letters, uh, dash wg, basically. Um, makes it really nice when you re write them down as bullet points. Um, <laughs> uh, and just show up and get involved in this in the discussion directly. Um, if anything, I would say, you know, people often come in and they're worried about stepping on toes or like, ah, oh, you know, like, can I contribute, you know, a whatever, uh, a Python version of you can. It's like, it's open source. Go for it, please. Yeah. Right. I, I'm not here to gatekeep anything. Um, if anything, we wanted to, you know, you had mentioned uh, the bazaar earlier, right? We're still at the point right now where everything's very frothy and we want things to be, it's all set up to be flexible enough for the general mess of people trying new things and experimenting, right? Yeah. Um, and even, you know, bringing it back a little bit to the IPVM stuff, you know, open world, it should be able to handle people creating new task types that we've never seen before. But if somebody wants one of these and somebody, you know, can provide it, they should be able to connect together. You can, it's designed so that it's flexible enough that you can put in, as long as you can describe the capability, literally anything you want to do in there should should work, right? And if it doesn't, definitely open an issue, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll, uh, uh, you know, respond back or hop on a call or something. Yeah. Uh, about that. Yeah. It's. I mean, I've genuinely seen people who. I've watched go from turning up and you know at, at Noisebridge, the local hackerspace, and going, I need to do this, and me going, oh, have you seen this? You can thing to them, you know, being fully involved in the thing because it it it's it's almost exactly what they want, or like they need to change something in how they think about things, so they need to talk to the experts, and that the experts are 
are right there. 